Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is your host, Elder Wanye Sloan of the New Mount Olive Pentecostal Church. And uh, I thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Sunday School on a Saturday night. I believe this is episode five. And before we go any further, um, let's go into a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, O oh God, Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're doing. God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, God, to minister your wonderful word. And God, we're praying that this word fall on good ground, oh God, and that somebody's got mind be touched, that somebody's encouraged. Somebody asked the question, what must I do to be saved? And yet in this regarding this particular lesson, God, we're asking, oh God, that somebody learn to release something through your wonderful power, uh, through your name. God, we thank you. God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, again, I want to say thank you. This is episode five. And as you all know, uh, in the past, uh, this is our last few past lessons, that we have been working on some spiritual disciplines, right? And so what was our first one, right? We started working on, uh, we had a lesson called It Is Written. We dealt with the word of the God. How, what is the value of the word of God, the word of God, and what it's meant to do in our life, what it's meant to do in terms of our walk. The Bible is our instructions. It gives us our instructions on how to carry out our walk of holiness, right? And then we dealt with other spiritual principles, and one was prayer. We talked about how you want to have an intimate uh, relationship with God, and that's done and invoked through prayer, through his wonderful name, which is Jesus, right? So now we understood prayer. Okay, I got the word. I was able to see myself. All right, I learned of God through uh, through the word. Okay, prayer. Now I'm working in establishing my communication between God. We also talked about what prayer is, what? A two-way street, right? In other words, I'm talking to God, and then God is also talking back to me, right? Okay, so we I got that, and then we, we moved on to another spiritual discipline, and we talked about fasting, right? And we purposely place fasting, the spiritual discipline of fasting, before the lesson that we're going to deal with today, because when you fast, fasting helps you humble yourself. It gets you to a place, a very sensitive place spiritually that you can hear from God. And then we learned also that we don't just fast for ourselves. We fast for uh, others, regardless of their friend or enemy. Yeah, we read that with David. We're fasting uh, for those people. And then fasting, um, again, I'm going to highlight that for the sake of this lesson, that fasting will bring about some humility. And so today's spiritual discipline, and we're going to talk about, oh, Lord, help us. Mm -hmm. Drum roll. Forgiveness. What do you mean? Forgiveness is a spiritual discipline? Exactly. Forgiveness is a spiritual discipline. So uh, I was on a, a conference call today uh, with family and uh, this kind of sprung upon my heart to talk about because I believe that maybe many people who is really seeking clarity on salvation or seeking the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, they've already been baptized in Jesus' name according to Acts chapter number 2, verse number 38, uh, which is the revelation of Matthew 28 and 19. They've already gone down to the name and they're seeking, they've already repented. And they're seeking the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And, and they don't understand that tarrying, which means to wait, right? Tarrying means to wait. Say it with me. Tarrying means to wait, right? When they were in the upper room, they were waiting. When the Bible says tarrying, they were waiting on the Holy Ghost. What did they do while they waited? They was praising the wonderful name of the Lord. And I say this, I know in our in our in our customs and, and the way we do things that we um we will um say, you know, stand and pray and kneel and pray. But when I read the Bible, when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said where they were sitting. What are you saying? You could be saved sitting. You could be saved standing. You could be saved kneeling. When the Holy Ghost, when your heart is right, the Holy Ghost will fill you up. And so um, I was uh, mentioning that I believe that um, a lot of the times people, um, are not able to receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, one of those hindrances are um, that could be prohibiting things is unforgiveness. And the principle still says that God uh, will not dwell in an unclean temple, and unforgiveness is unclean. And so we want to resolve that matter today. Forgiveness is one of those things where um, before it even occurs, Lord help us, before it even occurs, you're already forgiven. 
you already have a forgiving mindset. I'm talking about before the betrayal ever happens, you've already had a mind to forgive. Before the lie ever made it to your ear, you've already had a mind to forgive. I'm saying that um, before the spouse, and God forbid, God, God forbid that it happens, but I've already forgave. I've already placed myself. If you're going to be a true Christian and uh, believer of the word, follower of Christ, you got to have this mindset that I've already got my mind made up that I'm going to uh, forgive. Why? Because the scripture says that offenses must come. In other words, it's not about if it's going to happen. It's when it's going to happen right? That we already got to have a mind to forgive. Well, Jesus had this mindset already and he's in our, he's our example. Let's what, uh, I believe it's Luke 23 and 34. Um, Jesus, while already hanging on the cross, he has already been beaten all night long. He has already been betrayed by Judas. He's already been, uh, delivered to the Jews by Pilate. The Jews have already, uh, wanted uh, Barabbas, which is the murderer. And, uh, and, and wanted Jesus crucified. All of these things have already happened. Jesus already hung the cross. They have already drove the nails in his hands and they drove the nails in his feet. They plucked at his beard, y'all. They did all these things. And then while he was there hanging on the cross, they should have gave him a crown of a uh, royal crown, but they gave him a crown of thorns. I pulled that from midweek matter. Y'all make sure y'all check Elder Green out, right? So they... All these things that he should have, that he should not have received, but he received them, and yet he was said, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." Well, he already had a mind to forgive. Uh, There's a question for you: Have you made up your mind that you're going to forgive? Have you put yourself in a place where you're ready to forgive? And that, that's a that's a rhetorical question. It's not something for me to answer for you. That's something that you need to. Uh, uh, examine yourself and see where you are. Not only was Jesus that was in this place of having a mind to forgive before it ever happened, we can read with uh, in the book of Acts, there was a deacon by the name of Stephen. And Stephen had got before the people, and, and it was, if I can paraphrase it and run through the story, that while they had taken him, and really at the end of the story, they stoned him. And while stones was being thrown, and read the whole account in Acts chapter number seven, when, when while stones are being thrown at this man, I'm saying blows. He's being hit with stones, knees, arms are being hit. They aiming at his head, more than one stone at a time. And this man before. Uh, dying of that account or dying from these stones being thrown at him, he looks up and says, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Already having a mind to forgive before it ever occurred. So my question to you is, uh, what does it mean to forgive? What is the definition of forgiveness? Now, now I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, we have our own definitions, right? Uh, um, Here's a worldly definition. Uh, I forgive, but I ain't going to forget, right? And, and we say, uh, I forgive, but I bet you you won't do it again. You know, it comes with a threat. Come on, y'all. Y'all know that ain't forgiving. Matter of fact, we waiting on it to happen again. We have already prepared for it to happen again. We put the machete on our hip. We ready. We going to cut you. Let it happen again. I'm going to cut you. You know, they say stuff like that. I'm telling. So that's not forgiveness, y'all. We want to be at a place where we want God to, uh, to God to forgive us. Right. And so let's take a biblical definition of what forgiveness is. And it's uh, I jotted this down. The definition of forgiveness in a biblical sense is not to seek retaliation. Or punishment. For the individual who has done the wrong. I am not looking for any retaliation and I'm not looking for any revenge in regards to what has just transpired to me. And, and I, I know that there are things that happens. I mean, the tears are real. I am not trying to uh, downplay the hurt, downplay the pain, downplay the betrayal. You know, I know the hurt is real. I know it, it cut deep too. 
But I'm telling you that you cannot, you, you got to forgive. You cannot carry that. And you got to go into it with a mindset that, Lord, I forgive him. I've already forgave. And then you got to ask God to help you. You got to ask God to help you, give you strength through it, that you don't carry something that you're not designed to carry. You got to be able to forgive in whatever capacity that the, the, uh, the hurt was in. Now, there's something we can't have. Okay, I forgive you for stealing $10, but I won't forgive you for sleeping with my wife. In what capacity do we have to forgive? In every capacity, we have to forgive. And I know, I know what I'm saying is probably easier said than done, but this is why I always, this is what made me go back to the basics because there's things that we're saying we cannot do. And you're absolutely correct. If you can't do it, it is because uh, you do not have the power of the Holy Ghost. And so we need that power. We need God. We need that strength that when these daunting things transpire in our life, that we have the capacity to forgive, right? And and I, I would say this, you're probably saying, well, Sloan, you don't understand. You don't understand. And I'm, I, I would agree with you right now. I don't understand every offense that has transpired. But what I do understand is that you need forgiveness and you have to invoke forgiveness if you're going to make it to heaven. That's what I do know. I do know that holy unforgiveness, you're not going to make it to heaven. And you'll be amazed that people who, and I, this is not to downplay it, that I, what, uh, so I, you know, I said this some lessons ago, that because the heighten of sensitivity that every time you state something and you ooh, you step on the nerve and you, also, you know, you twitch, and then all of a sudden it's, oh, no, 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 you judging. No, I'm not judging. I'm challenging you. Because I've heard people um, that had, that are, in their late 60s, they're of age, they're, they're elderly in their age, and, and there's some things that they still are battling with, and it happened while they were growing up. They were molested, right? And, and, and they were they were screwed over by somebody. I've talked to people who had husbands, right? I mean, they have moved on. This is a truth. I wouldn't dare not say their name, but they have already moved on. Matter of fact, they had already got married again, right? And, and just the thought, of speaking about some of the things that have transpired through a previous marriage, they break down in tears. And, and, and I'm so I'm, I dare not say that the wounds are not real, but I'm saying if we're going to make it to heaven, y'all, we got to find it, find that place to forgive, right? What does free, uh, uh, forgiveness does? Well, it frees you emotionally, Right. And it frees you psychologically. In other words, my mind, don't you know that you can't find peace? I know that there are some things. Matter of fact, you'll be sitting there thinking about somebody who's dead and gone. And yet you're still bothered by something that transpired by that individual. I'm saying today is the day where you break free. Today is the day where we're no longer carrying things that we should not carry. Today is the day where I'm saying, Lord, give me direction that I may bring closure. Listen, if you don't find closure, you may be possibly shutting doors from uh, shutting doors where God want to take you. Because there's some places you can't go with that baggage. And that's what it is, baggage. All right. So and it frees you emotionally. And I'm not saying that you ought to become insensitive, but I'm saying to the place where where you can pray for an individual, right? And somebody asked me the question, I, I forgave, but how do I know that I forgive? I said, well, I tell you this. Now, we're, we're going to break this lesson up into uh, uh, to some subjects or subtopics because there's a process to forgiveness. One, forgiveness, The I will say this, and please don't, 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 don't think about it before you, before you comment. You can forgive, but you really can't forgive. I'll say it again. You can forgive, but you really can't ultimately forgive, right? So forgiveness for me starts on the inside, and forgiveness starts working on me. But when I say you can't forgive, you can forgive somebody, but God may never forgive them. And we'll see that in Scripture with Esau. Esau sought God with tears, and God didn't receive his repentance, we do not want to get in a place where we're deciding who gets forgiveness and who don't. 
because then we're seated, sitting in a seat of, of a God, of God, and we're attempting to be something that we're not. Do your part and forgive, right? And, and that's the first step. So do forgiveness. That's what you want to do. You want to be in a place where you forgive, right? And then upon forgiveness, there needs to be a level of rebuke. And when I say rebuke, what does rebuke mean? Correction. So if somebody had done something against you, don't be that individual where something has transpired and you haven't said nothing to that person. You know, that's why I hate gossip. You get a piece of information. You don't know if it's true or not. And then you go on with the emotion that it calls from the gossip. And then now when you see that person, you don't have anything to say up to them about it. And you don't even know if it's true or not. Rebuke means to correct. You mean you need to bring it right? Bring the accusation to the person. If you have an alt with your brother, go to him and go to him alone, right? And then you bring up the accusation. It's that way you can have it corrected. Bring up the problem. Bring it up so you all can resolve it, right? So then reconciliation, right? So we're going to forgive. We're going to, we're going to, um, uh, rebuke means to bring it up. Let's correct this problem. And then we're going to bring, come to a place of reconciliation, Right. And then re upon reconciliation is repentance and behind behind repentance is restoration. Now, we cannot deal with all of these in this one, but we're going to break them up and deal with it. Because a lot of times we might have um, brought it up. We've done the internal forgiving. We might have uh, we did the rebuke. In other words, we got with that individual. We talked about what uh, transpired. And then sometimes we don't repent. We simply say, well, it is what it is. That's how I feel about it. You know, we, we, we go down that road or, or we repent, but we haven't reconciled. Right. That's the long spoon handle. Right. Well, then you do you and I'm going to do me. We are saints and people of God with work to do that cannot be done individually. Or there's no restoration. In other words, with Paul and, and uh, John Mark, when there, there was some restoration towards the latter part of Paul's life. You know, you all read that when he called for John Mark. And so um, these steps has to be in place for true, uh, uh, true repentance. And then guess what? God ultimately does the forgiving. And it's important that we go through this because this is the same process in which God does with us. OK, and so um, we get that psychological and emotional. Uh, we're, we're being broke free from that. And so there was a really a pl purposely, I strategically placed our last lesson on forgiveness purposely because fasting, uh, I'm sorry, our last lesson, I strategically placed that on fasting and taught on that because fasting puts you at a place of humility. And uh, it takes humility to, it takes a heart of humility to forgive. And I, I'm going to tell you, saints, one of the hardest things to do is forgive when you know you weren't even wrong. I struggle with that, y'all. I just, oof, Lord, have mercy. I struggle with it. And But if for the sake of the overall mission, for the sake of the task that was at hand, I learned to repent of it. Even if I feel like I didn't need to, if somebody's offended by it, and I'm saying they should not be offended, I went and did what I had to do for the sake of the task because Satan would use anything to divide us. And so that's something that we have to have in our spiritual discipline. We have to know how to have a heart of humility. And when you have a place where you cannot forgive, you need to get back to a place um, where you need to start fasting. And so another thing here that I jotted down, don't defend yourself, right? You're the one who committed the offense. And sometimes we go to people and, and we say, uh, oh, forgive me. And, and then you um, and then all of a sudden, you know, it may get out, you know, whatever transpired. And then you start defending yourself. You know, you repented the right way, but because the chatter was coming and you can hear it. And then all of a sudden we're worried about our egos. We're worried about our own personality. We, you know, in the church world, God help us that we're so worried about how we appear to the next individual. And I'm guilty. I never really realized how uh, infected I was with that thought process. A lot of things we do more than to, to please the person sitting next to us. We're more concerned about the next person than what God even thinks of us. You know, we dress up and, and we put on, we go through all this, this, I don't even know what word to use. We just go through all of this to appear to somebody as if we got it all together. 
and, and it, it's a hundred percent to please the next person. Come on, people of God, we 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 gotta put a halt to that. We do not want to give more credence to man than God, right? We don't want to worship the creature uh, more than the, what well, we should never re worship the creature, but we give more reverence to the creature than the Creator. You know, no, no. Let's let's get in alignment, people of God, with what God uh, desires from us. Uh, so if you bring something upon yourself, let's read First Peter chapter number two and verse number uh, twenty. You bring uh, if some, if you do something and you're the person of offense, um, then you need to go through with that, right? You need to you need to go through with the accusation. Yeah, I don't want everybody talking. Yeah, I don't want everybody that my name in their mouth. But you need to take it patient. Let's see what the word of the Lord says. For what glory is it if when ye be buffered for your faults, in other words, you've done something, you should take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. And so I'm saying that when you go through something um, and you bring it upon yourself, uh, God, you have to, I'm saying you have to go through that. And that's what God accepts right? Don't look for any shortcuts. If you're going through and um, you've already repented of it, uh, go through what you have to go through. And and, and I, I know sometimes we don't want that. We want to know, we want to, uh, again, we want to be viewed a certain kind of way. Well, you know what? Again, take it patiently and stop worrying about what everybody think about it. You want to be accepted by God, right? I'm saying still come to the fellowship, don't distance yourself when, when you have done something. That's the first thing people do because Satan works in isolation. Something transpires and all of a sudden we distance ourselves when really the people of God, they're not your enemy. They're going to pray for you. They're going to fast with you. They're going to love on you until you get to where you need to be in God. So don't let people um, push you away and don't let isolation take place, right? All right, so the results of not forgiving someone is that you will lose compassion. And, and when you hold on to unforgiveness for a long time, you will lose your compassion. And we're almost done. You'll lose your compassion. And that's the one thing you don't want to do. You want to keep your compassion. You want to keep your heart sensitive uh, to the things of God. And so with that even being said, we're going to take a look at Absalom before we close. All right. So Absalom had a sister by the name of Tamar who was raped by her half brother by the name of Amon. And uh, Amon. And so Amon raped her. And we're not going to deal with all that. But we're going to get to the point where Absalom sat there for two years. And he was upset, fuming, because David, his father, did nothing about it. David did not move how uh, Absalom felt like he should have. And so Absalom, after the course of two years, worked up a plot. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, this is how you don't want revenge. When you got to deal with it, you got to deal with it in its moment. If you're hurting, if you're wounded, if something's bothering you, you got to deal with it. You cannot let something sit there. It's almost like a, 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 a an animal. You know, everything starts off in the embryonic stage. But if you don't kill it off quick, it's going to grow and grow and grow before it consumes you. And revenge and anger and bitterness, vindictiveness had taken over Absalom. And to the point that Absalom killed his own brother. I'm not saying again that the hurt was not real. I don't believe, I, I do believe he was highly upset. However, how he handled the matter is wrong. And so not only, and I watch this, you would have thought that he would have been, had been somewhat satisfied uh, not that sin will ever set you will sin will never satisfy you. Just first off, sin will never satisfy you. But he went on to not only do that, but then he came after his own father, slept with his concubines on the rooftop. So the Bible says he stole the heart of the people. Again, he came after David, tried to kill his own father. God's a man after God's own heart. Bitterness. Don't let bitterness hijack you. And, and eventually he got caught up by his hair and he was slew. And I'm simply saying that don't let unforgiveness tie you up. Leave, unforgiveness will leave you hanging. The Bible says that while he was uh, fleeing, he was on a horse 
and he got caught by his hair, and he hung there until one of Joe, uh, until uh, David's um, um, one of his generals slew him, took an arrow, slew him. But I'm saying he was left there dangling, hanging, and that's what unforgiveness does. It leaves you hanging, it leaves you dangling there, until ultimately you will die from it. Find it in your heart to forgive. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Again, I'm sorry this is kind of what a shorter service or a shorter lesson, but we have multiple lessons on unforgiveness because I want to see you saved. I want to see you delivered. And you all want to see me delivered. You all say, hey, Sloan, we want to see you delivered. Then this is a spiritual discipline. We got to work on people of God. We got to start forgiving. This is just as essential as prayer. This is just as essential as fasting. This is just as essential as reading our word. It makes a difference. Until the next time we meet people of God, we're praying. Our handles are going to be, hey, you all follow us on Facebook. Uh, our church Facebook page is New Mount Olive Pentecostal Church. Follow us there. We are also on YouTube, New MT Olive PPC. Follow us. Please subscribe to our channel. We have so much documentation on our church website, uh, New Mount Olive PPC. Those handles are going to be somewhere on the screen. Um, and uh, please uh, follow us. We got Midweek Matter. Elder Green is teaching Midweek Matter, y'all. And ironically, and I promise you, we did not talk about uh, our subjects. We kind of, I kind of do mine in my basement. He kind of do his where he at. And ironically, we were talking about the same exact thing, you all. Um, and I'm looking around on the internet and I see more and more. I think I saw something from the mission. They're dealing with reconciliation and restoration. This is a topic, y'all, that God is putting on the people of God, hearts, and we got to deal with it. I love you all. If there's somebody you need to repent to, find them, forgive them, and move forward. God bless you.